Hello and welcome to Michelle's Life on Repeat. I am here to talk about hemiplegic migraines again. And yes, my Axon glasses work wonderfully. I wear them all the time. I forget that they're even on my head. And um, I find that the next pair I get is going to have sunglasses, my prescription sunglasses in them. So I'm excited. So someone asked me, how are they working? You know, it's been a few months and I have to say absolutely fantabulous. And no, I'm not getting paid by Axon. So I wanted to let you know that those work. If you haven't tried them, watch those videos. There's a few of them out there on my testing of the Migraine Relief FL41 lenses from Axon. Back to hemiplegic migraines, let's talk a little bit about triggers. Now for me, hemiplegic migraine triggers are the same as any other trigger. I don't know, I can't roll the dice and say this food will give me hemiplegic migraine and this will give me just a regular migraine. It's all, it's not, doesn't really matter. So regardless if you have hemiplegic migraines or not, if we're talking about triggers, we're talking about environmental man-made things that you can control or the, I call them emotional triggers that are at the other side of the scale. This hand, this emotional one, is a little bit smaller and it's a lot easier to diagnose, I think, for you. If you're trying to figure out, and you haven't yet, what may be some of your triggers and your thoughts, maybe write down some things that flare it up, make it worse. Maybe one day you don't have a migraine and then the next you do. Let's kind of talk about what some people's triggers are. Emotionally, we have stress. Stress in the good kind and stress in the bad kind. You know, stress in the good kind for me is like, I'm planning a vacation, I gotta, I gotta get the right wardrobe, or do I have enough time to do the laundry, pack everyone's suitcases, gotta buy the tickets, what's the weather gonna be like? Those are stresses, exciting stresses. Looking forward to something, a vacation, uh, a birthday, a celebration, a wedding. You know, it can be anything that brings you excitement. I could be laughing, belly roll laughing with some of my friends, and I know that it will trigger a migraine later. I mean, tears rolling down laughter. I could be crying, weeping, having a very emotional, little hard time with uh, someone, and, and they'll say to me, you're going to be okay because you better stop crying. You might have a migraine. And I'm like, yeah, but the crying is needed. The tears are needed. And I deal with the migraine that comes. Those are uh, stress in the emotional realm, good and bad. There is also worrying and anxiety. Now there's a an anxiety that we all share, which we, you know, we think of in our brain of, um, How's it going to be? What What's that going to look like? When I try that, how, will I succeed? It's the what ifs that are just around the bend. We all experience that, that form of anxiety. But there is full on anxiety attacks, which you and your doctors really need to discuss because it is a game changer for a lot of arenas of your life. And if you struggle with anxiety, I have seen it, I've seen it firsthand and it is uh, all encompassing. It is, uh, it's like a death hold choking out your air, your oxygen, your ability to think clearly. And I highly encourage you, if you are experiencing severe forms of anxiety, that it is time, it is time. And in this day when we're all worried about you know, the virus is going around. It's not to be just brushed off. It needs to be dealt with. So please talk with some of your doctors and medical team and your uh, family and friends and reach out and try to get resources and help. So we have emotional stressors. We have anxiety. We have um, worry financial issues, you know, gosh, do I have enough money to get through the paycheck? I need there's emotional stress involved and those will trigger migraines for a lot of us who are chronic migrainers. On the other side, we have um, 
things that are man-made. I say man-made. The fluorescent lights are my biggest trigger. I cannot go into grocery stores and um, in little pharmacies, even the doctor's office, even the eye doctors, go figure, without wearing FL41 or blue light blockers. If you have them, give it a try. Um, before I got these, I was always in a ball cap with my sunglasses and that helped a little bit. It gave me 10 to 15 minutes in a certain store, maybe 20 in other stores. But then it was full on migraine, my service dog telling me the migraine's coming, the aura's here, get out of the store, get out of the store. So fluorescent lights are really big for a lot of us. If you haven't paid the connection to you working under office lights, that might be one of your daily triggers. The other thing is the bright sunshine. Now, I know that's not man-made, but I have a choice um, to go directly driving at high noon when the sun's going to be right in my eyes. That will trigger a migraine for me. Uh, so I have to play the sun, you know? When's the sun going to be out when I'm doing what I'm doing? Other man-made things are foods, drinks, uh, and let's see, flowers, smells, perfumes, uh, deodorants, you know it if you are sensitive to smells. Whew, there's a little critter flying in here. You know it if you're sensitive to smells. I had a flower in here a few minutes ago and you can see my nose is all red. And <laughs> I love that uh, Miltoniopsis, but she sits way away from where I am in. If I'm in a closed space with her, the nose turns red and it turns itchy because I have allergies. Some of the other triggers um, that you may notice some of the other triggers that um, can contribute for me, and you'll have to write them down and watch how your body responds. Um, definitely the food, the drinks, different foods and drinks. Uh, barometric pressure. Now granted, I have no control over it. It's not man-made, That's, uh, but it's not an emotional issue. So I put it in the other category. But barometric pressure is my number two uh, uncontrollable thing that I have literally not much control over but when the bar barometric pressure swings really low really quickly it boom I'm in a migraine or if it swings up high really quickly I'm in a migraine altitude change if you live high up in the mountains and you have to come down in the valley at two hours up two hours down it will mess with you if you have migraines most likely smells driving, chewing gum can trigger migraines, especially if you have any nerves uh, or neck pains, um, maybe a little bit of arthritis in the neck. Turning to drive will trigger me um, on the neck and that will go up and trigger migraines throughout my brain. There's so many things that can trigger a migraine for all of us. Some people know that they have um, tumors or growths in their brain because they've had the MRI. So if you are consistently having more and more uh, head pain and you know that you have that going on in your brain, check in with your doctor and uh, re-examine and retest and make sure you're on a safe path. But there are so many triggers out there. Let me know in the comments down below some of the triggers you have for migraines. Um, and I, I would love to, to expand on the list if you want me to comment on anything else in more detail. There are tons of articles out there about certain foods that are known to trigger migraines, but some of us can eat them and never have a problem. Others, you know, they can't. So it's trial and error. And a migraine diary will be the best thing that you can do to keep track of your triggers. I know that knowing what your triggers are help, but they don't 100% wipe out your migraines. But it's one step, one baby step at a time, and acquiring some more knowledge about what's triggering you um, is a process. So write it down, find out what it is for you, and if you want to talk some more about triggers, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I appreciate it and I wish you well and I wish you peace. And remember, you're not alone on this migraine journey. Until we talk again, bye-bye.